today's video, in today's video, we will look into the scenario in which a second Chechen war breaks out in 2023. And the first thing that happens is, like most of the videos I impact Russia, well, Ukraine pushes them back. Which makes sense, because that's what's going to happen. And yeah, with Ukraine, with Russia being split into three front lines in Ukraine. The weaker one over here, by Crimea, as Crimea is being prepared to be defended, let's say, is in doing so well. With Chechnya, with Chechnya, with Chechnya declaring war on Russia. So technically, they'll be represented by the color blue. Although they're technically red. With Chechnya quickly declaring war on Russia. Basically, yeah. Once they declared war, they were invaded pretty swiftly. But Chechnya doesn't stop. As the people were ready to fight back. They even crossed out of Chechnyan territory into Russian territory. With Chechnyan people in Ukraine actually fleeing to here. Without this point, this is where Russia has lost the war in Ukraine. Much other stuff would probably happen in Russia after this. Including political turmoil. And with this, the fall of Russia, occupation of Ukraine has happened. With Russia's, with Russia crumbled to the ground. With Russia significantly weakened after the loss in Ukraine. With Ukraine quickly deciding to support Chechnya. And yeah, the colors have shifted just because they did. Because Chechnya was the aggressor. But as they were technically on Ukraine's side for a while. Yeah. And so there, the war's idea is basically to take over. It's really only Ukraine and Poland who decide to go against them. And the U.S., well, that is obviously going to happen. Belarus sides with them and Armenia, which leads to them getting three people supporting against. Some people are supporting Chechnya, others aren't. But most countries are. And so Canada also decides to do what the U.S. does because that's how Canada works. But the rest of NATO doesn't really do anything, but why would they? There's nations that would care and wouldn't care. Ultimately, I'm questioning what... I don't think Canada actually would support the, this. Because that would be like saying... Something. But let's just say they do for the sake of today's video. Let's just say that happens. And this is if Cheshnev revolts again. The world would do this out of reasons... It wouldn't be the most, like, say, widespread supported. Support wouldn't be as widespread as you may think. With the Chechnyan revolution being a big deal to the whole world. As it takes place in an area that's pretty resource rich. And terrain is not the best. With them moving further in, Russia would still refuse to sign peace with this newly sovereign nation. You can only be supporting. You can still support them, but I'm marking who's recognizing them too. If you recognize Chechnya, you'll be put and support them, you're supporting. If you refuse to recognize Chechnya and are supporting Russia, you're supporting the blue team. With them moving through Dagestan with a lot of ease. With Dagestan clear independence, there's still Russian troops in the south. 
These are quickly repelled, and in the north, they're also repelled. At this point, there's two nations on one team against them. And how does Chechnya war be worse than the first one? Because other places with pro-independence movements join. Including Kolaria. Which who would realize that they would do this? Nobody ever would think this. And so... North Oessia, maybe. And so far, Russia is on the verge of falling apart. With Kaliningrad declaring independence, with the Russian central government declaring war. And as you can see, Russia is falling apart. With Kalaria declaring independence, we have a Finnish support of this team. The rest of the world hasn't really come to support. With most of these rebellious areas being dem democracies, which really don't work. Well, in theory, they say they're democracies, but most of them function as military states. And with Tartar Stam, which declared independence, making advances. Lots of advances were made by Yakuts, as they have taken out Russian military bases, and Tan Yutuva decided to come back. Well, let's see the real theater where all the madness is happening. Although not the biggest advances, this is the main front of this war. As this is the Chechnyan War, there's other stuff going on throughout Russia. Most likely, if Chechnya was having this much success, a different group will rise up as a, not say a democratic group per se, more of a military state, like a military wanting military to rule over Russia. The military in this area revolts over the failures in Chechnya and Ukraine. Most of the military met there, but some groups started over here. And why would this group be so broad? Well, a lot starting in this region. Eventually, Russia is in a civil war. Not just with Chechnya they're at war, but in a full-blown civil war. As Chechnya is advancing, getting big. With Russia on the brink of civil war and unable to stop this brink, they end up at war with Russia. The Russian military has rose up the government due to their failures in Chechnya and now in all the rebellious pro provinces. Originally they were really only having problems in Ukraine but with the Ukraine crisis being a problem and independence then becoming a crisis for this government came more problems slowly evolving into worse and worse problems. As you can see, that's on the map. I don't know what it is. I guess maybe I used the wrong tool. But with this new military rising up, it's hard to say which areas will stay and which won't. And the people in... Vo not Vojtashevinia. This is Valvi Valvstock, unsatisfied with the government. With a lot of people then joining this team as it moves closer. As it encircles Val Valvistock. Val Valvistock doesn't even put up a fight. With the forces here moving to Sakhalin. With a war expanding into Yakuts. Now this becoming a what is going on? With this becoming an area of problem. With Yakuts unable to hold this back, a Russian style war is fought. And with this being 
this. Yakuts. Battle of Yakuts has ended. Not really. And then moving up across Yakuts, cutting off Kamchata. As a big forces in left in Sakhalin. This group uses its numbers territory to be able to take Sakhalin out. But in the east, the fighting isn't as fast, more so because of population than anything else. With most of the fighting areas, with to put ease on the fighting, a province that starts moving towards St. Petersburg is granted independence by the central Russian government in Moscow to get rid of one of the fronts. And Tanyutuva, as long as they retreat, leave these lands, Russia said they could have peace. But on the other hand, Calaria, they have to negotiate. Russian Civil War breaking out. The advantage in the south is firmly put in the hands of Chechnya. So they move up to take the city of Volgorod. With the Caspian Sea access being completely taken from Russia. By Chechnya and Dagestan. With the revolutionary military revolting against the government. With them kicking the government out of Yakuts and moving further and further along. The military forces are unstopped. And this being like a quarter of Russia's military. The top of the military, really. The ones who are upset over Ukraine. If the battle with the revolutionaries get turning for the worse as they meet up with Tartarstan. And with their stretch, they move north, meeting up with where Calaria declared independence from and taking St. Petersburg. Well, this being what they call, some people would probably call the end. But no, we're talking about Chechnya, not the Civil War, guys. So yeah. Well, this is a part of the Chechnya War. With Calaria not allowed to join Finland. Uh, the desire to do so is becoming more powerful. With the Battle of Moscow breaking out with the success of this military forces. Russia has brought more and more order. And justice, they call it. With Russia just collapsing to this and they make a quick war into Tartarstan. They try, they begin war with Hilaria and everyone else basically. With this Russian military authoritarian dictatorship becoming in The Russian military which has taken charge of Russia and Russia, a new Russia, with the new Kremlin being more powerful and anti-West. This military doesn't like Western ideals. It's worse than this Russia, although their failures are being known as, well, they're losing lots of lands in the Caucasus, but they managed to make a counter-offensive but it's not the most successful. It has a lot of blood and very little yield. They're basically losing men a 10 to 1 ratio with their enemies. But they are managing to invade Tartarstan, as Tartarstan is actually struggling here. But really, it's more so over in the south. And the west and the center. With unrest over this war growing within Russia. And calls for an end to the war being made more and more loud. 
and threats becoming more and more noticeable, the world has become in a dire place for diplomacy. A more of a anti-West, anti-East kind of government. It's anti-everyone. If you can name a country, it probably doesn't like it. It makes peace with Chechnya and Dagestan, which get their goal of making a united Caucasus empire. Which is interesting, their border choice. But with the negotiations being mostly in their favor, but not fully, what they do is start it up here. They move down. Over and up. Just make negotiations totally went outside of their favor. Chechnya went in their favor. So after a Chechnyan war, Chechnya, as you would expect, is independent. There is also technically a Russian. Russia has become anti-West and has also, in case you forgot, become a ruthless dictatorship led by the military as the military has overthrown Russia in a sweeping campaign. And what's left of it is basically Russia, except they lost a few territories. They did gain back Yakutsk, Kalaria, and Tanyutuva, but they lost a lot of the territory they gained back to Chechnya and Dagestan, which had formed the Empire that just formed the Caucasus Federation. Russia does still get access to the water, but that's not an important area. With, unfortunately, a bad turn of events, Ukraine basically does something Russia would do. To avoid the Donbass from being annexed, they annex part of Russia, which weakens this dictatorship further. With it losing parts of Tartarstan and parts of the Caucasus and Dictatorship, the Caucasian Republic. And yes, this is what would happen if this happened to Russia. And North Korea is still supporting Russia because they don't realize the war is over. Oh, that's sad. And so that's all for today's video. Please like and subscribe. Why should you subscribe? Because we have 69 subscribers before our goal of 1,000 subscribers before September 1st. So hurry up and subscribe because that'd be great. Thank you. For watching today's video that's all for today's video please like subscribe and comment wild mapper out but not until you subscribe bye